Hi, Naomi here. This week we're looking at the theme of healing. And if you're anything like me, um, sometimes you've been reluctant to pray for healing. While I 100% believe that God is capable and powerful enough to heal people, sometimes I've been a bit worried, what happens if he doesn't heal when I pray? For me, I've not wanted to get my hopes up sometimes if I've been praying for myself. When I've been praying for other people, I've not wanted to look stupid. God, what happens if you don't heal them? And then I just look a bit silly. But I, um, I have experienced healing in my own life. When I was a teenager, I really struggled with anger. When I was about 16, 15, 16, um, I would just uh, get into rages where I couldn't control at all um, what happened. And I felt quite just um, powerless in those moments of just feeling so full of rage. And um, most of it was directed towards my brothers and my parents. And I can remember after one particular altercation coming out of it and just thinking like, I can't keep doing this like but I feel really out of control and like I have no like yeah handle on this I can remember praying and asking God God would you just help me would you just take away this anger from me because I need something that's beyond me to fix me and I'd love to tell you that you know at that point you know I don't know I was struck by lightning and something changed Nothing dramatic happened in the slightest. Um, if, if anything, I didn't really feel like anything had shifted at all. But looking back, I know that it's from that moment that something internally just was different. Um, I didn't get wound up in the same way. Things that would normally have triggered me a bit um, just didn't. And I had just a bit of a different perspective and outlook. I know that it was God who was healing part of my heart there so that I just wouldn't be consumed with anger. Today I want to tell you the story of a guy called Akmal. Akmal is from Central Asia and sadly he was in a car accident that left him paralysed. And while he was paralysed he also developed a number of different health conditions. He actually got cancer and his back started to be covered in tumours. He was bedridden. He started to have real um, trouble with his eyesight and trouble breathing. His whole skin turned as white as snow and he, he was really struggling to sleep. At this point, like, you know, he, he wasn't a Christian. He didn't um, know to, to be praying for healing at all. And um, he got a visit from a friend of his mum's. And um, she saw him and was like, oh, gosh, like, this is serious. And he was like, she was like, right, you need to have a visit from my son. He can pray for you because he, he worships a different God. So this guy called Paul comes around to visit Akmal and Paul um, says peace be on this household and then um, just tells Akmal about his God and prays for him. And that night Akmal has the best sleep he's had in, in months and it kind of gets him to think a little bit more about like, oh like maybe I want to find out more about this God. So he calls Paul and says, hey, I want to start worshipping your God. And, and Paul tells him about uh, Jesus. And uh, so it's at this point that, you know, akmal has got this understanding of Jesus, but maybe doesn't fully follow him. And um, he's pretty sick. So everyone around him thinks he's going to die. He's in a lot of pain. And one night he's in so much pain that he just cries out like, Jesus, if you're real, show yourself to me. And because he's so sick every night, someone from his family would come and sleep next to his bed. And so his brother was on duty. And, and in the middle of the night, this um, light just starts shining on the wall. And um, neither of them can work out where it's coming from. And the brother actually gets a bit scared about it and decides to go and sleep somewhere else. But Akmal um, recognises it as a sign that he's not on his own, that God is with him. That light doesn't disappear for three days, day and night. So in the middle of the day, in the sun, that you can still see this light on his wall. And Akmal, he just, he just in that moment, it's just like, I know that God's with me. And um, after the end of those three days, um, Akmal just realises that like different things are happening to his body. The cancer and the tumour, tumours, they just disappear. His body begins to get a bit stronger. He's still paralysed, but he is absolutely consumed with this joy, this joy that um, that God would save his life. And like a few months after this has all happened to him, and like obviously people are a bit like, what? Like this guy was going to die and now like he seems to be getting better. What's going on? 
he's speaking to a friend of his and um, she calls him on the phone and it's just like telling him some of the stuff that's going on and um he's telling her about hey like god's healed me and she says well yeah like i'm really impressed that god has healed you from your sickness but you still can't walk and this is what akmal says this joy that i have couldn't be provided from anyone other than god for Akmal, even though he, his body has physically been healed in some ways from the cancer, he, um, he knew actually the best healing was the joy that he had. That was what was making the difference in his life. And I don't know about you, but I know that actually there's, there's times where we pray that people get healed and we don't see that happen. But I know that there's other times when like, we pray for people to be healed and God's doing an internal work. Sometimes stuff we just don't see. But that doesn't mean that God isn't working. And so today, as you go through like just the reflection, just really hope that you understand that God is always doing stuff and there's opportunities for us to be involved in the work that he's doing. Have a good one.